Jack. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. It's going, going, it's almost gone. So hurry. This is one of the last times we can tell you how to get five, actually five, pocket-sized Bugs Buddy comic books. All new, all different, all yours for only 15 cents and one box top from delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Look, Doc, you better hurry. Keep listening. Hear all the details later. Wayne Baxter and his wife Ethel were running a small restaurant in Toronto when the Klondike Gold Rush started. And to them, it looked like a good opportunity to get in on the ground floor of a fortune by opening a restaurant in the Yukon. They sold out their possessions for enough to pay their passage and have a small residue of cold cash. When they arrived in Dawson a month later, they found that other people with more cash than theirs had the same idea. They also found that their savings were far from sufficient to open even a small cafe. Well, dear, all we can do now is get a job and save enough to open a place of our own. Working for day wages won't do it, Wayne. We can't save enough. I have an idea. What is it? Well, yesterday I was in the Hudson's Bay Company store when a trapper came in with his fur catch. They paid him more than $5,000 for his furs. But, Wayne, we'd have to go into the back country to do that. We don't know anything about trapping. <laughs> That's a part of my dark past I never told you about. I trapped one winter when I was a kid. I did pretty good at it, too. Made enough to put me through a year of college. Well, that's fine, but I'd be of no help to you. Tell you what, I'll agree to it if you'll let me stay here in Dawson and get a job. Do you think you can? Oh, I know I can. I was offered a job as a waitress in the Borealis Cafe today. Oh, that won't pay much. Oh, I'll get a small salary, but I'll also get my food and tips. From what I saw, the miners are generous with their tips. Yeah. Between us, we should be able to save enough to open a small place on one of the trails where, where competition won't be so keen as it is here in Dawson. It's a start, Wayne. And with luck, we'll make it. It was six months later when Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, mushed through the snows that covered the Indian hills and stopped at the small cabin of trapper Wayne Baxter. Looking! Hi, Hello! Welcome, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Wayne. <laughs> Hello, King, you old rascal. Mind if we stop here for a while, Wayne? Glad to have you, Sergeant. I'll fix a pot of tea. And I think I can find a bone for King. I uh, have some news from your wife. Oh, from Ethel? Is it good or bad news? Sounded good to me. Oh, then let's go inside. You can tell me while I get the tea kettle on the fire. All right. Come on, King. As they entered the cabin, Sergeant Preston was surprised to see a number of excellent silver fox pelts stretched on boards to dry. Take off your parka and throw it on the bunk over there, Sergeant. Then get up the fire and get warm. Thanks, Wayne. Oh, looks like you've been doing all right with your traps. Yes, I have. How do you like those pelts, Sergeant? As fine as any I've seen. If I know furs, they're worth almost $1,000 each. And I have eight of them. That'll be good news for your wife. <laughs> What's your news, Samantha? Well, she told me to tell you that she has an option on a trailside tavern up on Feather Creek. Feather Creek? That's where they're going in for big mining operations, isn't it? Yeah, it struck gold there a year ago. Several large companies recently took over most of the claims. They're going to work the area on a big scale. How on earth did Ethel get an option on a place up there? A man named Wheeler built a tavern before the rush started. 
And he took over the food contract with the mining company. That means he'll have to go to the mining camps, which are about 50 miles from his tavern. Ah, so he's selling out. That's right. Ethel said she'd saved enough money from tips to pay for an option. Now she wants you to return to Dawson and try to raise the rest of the money to buy the place. Five thousand dollars will do it. <laughs> With these pelts, I won't have to borrow a cent. I guessed as much when I saw them. Did she uh, say how long an option she has? It expires Saturday. Ah, that leaves just three days. Well, that's plenty of time. I don't know about that, Sergeant. See that uh, bale of skins over there? Yes. They're all good pelts. I'll have to freight those into Dawson, which means I've got to go to Elk Station and hire a freighter to pick them up and haul them for me. I think I can solve that problem, Wayne. How? I'm on my way to Elk Station now. On my way back, I'll stop and pick up your furs. We can go into Dawson together. That'd be fine, Sergeant. But I don't want to impose on you. There's no imposition at all. I'm glad to do it for you. Oh, uh, Wayne, I'm going to make a suggestion. What's that? A couple of fur thieves have been operating in the stores, right? Fur thieves? Yes, I'm going to Elk Station to post reward notices and make inquiries about them. Gosh, I'd hate for somebody to steal these furs. So would I. You'll have to take in your traps before we leave, won't you? Yes, it'll take about a day to do it. I see. You shouldn't leave your furs unguarded. That's what I was thinking, but I don't see how I can do anything else. I'll leave King with you. <laughs> hey, that'll be great. He could stay in the cabin while I take in the traps. That's right. King, old fella, how about staying with Wayne? <laughs> It looks like that's settled, Sergeant. Yes. I'll be back tomorrow sometime, and then we can load your furs on my sled and start for Dawson. Good. If I'm not here when you get back, I'll be out taking in my traps. You, you'll find the key under a shingle just above the door. Come in and make yourself comfortable until I get here. Late that day, in the small settlement of Elk Station, a man named Red Dover watched with interest as Sergeant Preston tacked a reward poster on a tree beside the local constabulary office. Red waited until a few of the villagers crowded about the tree to study the poster before he joined them. A few moments later, he turned and sauntered toward the tavern. Once inside, he quickened his steps and hurried down the hall. Piney. What's the matter, Red? Monty just hit town. That fellow Preston. Well, what about it? He tanked up a reward poster for fur thieves. Oh, he did, huh? Are our names in the poster? No, not even have descriptions on it. But it offers a reward for anyone caught stealing furs or raiding traps. Ah, that's not so good. So far, we're in the clear, but someone might get suspicious about the bear trap I bought this morning. Yeah, if Preston finds out about it, he might stop here to ask questions. And I don't want to be here when he does. Yeah, you're right, Red. Let's clear out. Hey, what about that trapper in the Indian Hills? Well, we'll head that way just like we planned. I've got the bear trap here. There's snow falling to cover our trail. Yeah, that's a break for us. Now, let's get moving. I'll harness the dogs while you get the gear together. It was almost daybreak when Red Dover and his companion, Piney Steel, reached the trap line in the Indian Hills. The snow was still falling, and a brisk wind was swirling it into drifts that covered the trail of their dog team. At the crest of a timbered ridge, Red called a halt. How dear are we to the trap line, Red? You see that cut just below the timber down there? Yeah. Yeah, I can just make it out. Yeah, that trapper comes through there. I seen him do it twice, so that's his regular route. Now get out that bear trap. Right. Down, you huskies. Down. We'll leave the team here till we set the trap, and then we'll take to cover. Yeah, here's the trap. Let's go. Yeah, I guess our tracks will be covered. The trapper should catch sight of him. He might get suspicious. I know. When they reached the narrow draw, Piney Steel and Red Dover opened the jaws of the powerful bear trap and set the trigger. <coughs> then they retraced their steps, knowing that the falling snow would soon cover their tracks. They'll hide the dogs in the timber back yonder. And that trap's right on the trail. There's a chance that the trapper won't step in it. If he doesn't, we'll grab him and put his leg in the trap. Uh, he'll never get out. That trap will hold him. Unless someone comes looking for him, and that's not likely for a spell. Right up, you huskies, up! All right, mercy! It was more than an hour later when the two men saw a fur-clad figure trudge over the trail toward the draw. Here comes that trapper. Keep down so he doesn't see us. Got traps over his shoulder. Must be collecting him. Maybe he's aiming to pull on. Yeah. He must have plenty of pelts in his cabin. Now watch him. He's getting near our trap. Maybe he'll step into it without any help from us. He's almost on it. Yeah. 
Maybe he will step... Back. He's caught. He sure is. Rick, come on. Let's get this sled up to the cabin. Up, you huskies, up! Red, Red he sees us. Well, what of it? He won't live to tell anyone we ran off and left him there. He's yelling for help. I'll let him yell. Mush, you huskies, mush! Red and Piney hurried from the scene without a backward glance at the man who was helpless in the powerful bear trap. They soon reached Wayne Baxter's cabin. We'll have to bust in the door. It's padlocked. I'll shoot the lock away. No, no, don't do that. Someone might be near enough to hear the shot and start investigating. Let me try the door. Red, listen. There's a dog in there. Yeah, I hear him. I never saw a dog with that trapper when we were casing his trap lines. No trapper takes a dog with him when he walks his trap lines. Animals would get his set and stay clear of the traps. He must have kept him in the cabin all the time. What do we do with the dog? Go back to the sled and get one of those raw hide traces. I think I know how to handle him. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> What's up, Doc? The time is almost up for you Bugs Bunny fans. This is one of your very last chances on this program to hear how to get five. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books. All five, if you hurry, for only 15 cents and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. An exclusive offer made only by these two delicious, crisp, Nourishing breakfast cereals shot from gun. They're stories you've never seen or read before. They're all brand new. They're all different. They're all in full color. Each book is 32 pages thick. A whole set of five Bugs Bunny comic books has 160 pages. Packed to the covers with adventures, mystery, laughs, excitement. Wow, Doc, what an offer. Take a look at this one for a riot of laughs. Bugs Bunny fights the man from Mars. It's out of this world. Bugs is at the mercy of a spy from Mars and his deadly ray gun. Don't miss this fun-packed story. Or other Bugs Bunny comic books. Bugs Bunny outwits the smugglers. Bugs Bunny aboard the mystery submarine. And many, many more. Yes, we'll send you five. Five different comic books. And we'll also send you full details on how easy it is to get ten more. You can't buy these handy pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books anywhere. And this is one of the very last times we can make this offer on the radio. Look, Doc, you better hurry. Yes, as Bugs Bunny says, hurry. Don't miss out. Send only one thin dime and a nickel. That's 15 cents in coin, your name and address, and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Mail to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. I'll repeat that address. Mail to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue our story. When Red Dover and Piney Steel arrived at Wayne Baxter's cabin, they found that a dog was inside. And from the snarls and growls they heard, they guessed he had been left to guard the trapper's fur catch. Taking one of the rawhide traces from their own sled, Red Dover prepared to cope with the unexpected turn of events. Here's the trace, Red. What do you do with it? Tear out that oil paper in the window. I'll make a loop of this trace. Right. He's trying to get through the window. I expected he would. Now get out of the way and I'll lasso him. Now look out for him, Red. He's not fooling. King leaped at the small window and tried to struggle through, but his body was too large. For a moment he was wedged in. He tried to withdraw, but Red tossed the loop of rawhide around the big dog's neck and drew it tight. You got him. Hang on him. Well, this will take the fight out of him. Slowly, the struggles of the dog subsided. Uh, you better let me put a bullet through him, Red, or maybe club him or Never something. Never mind, he's done for. But you can't stand there holding him like that. I won't. I'll loop this end around one of the corner logs like this. Cinch it tight. I will. There. And that'll hold him till he stops breathing. Now, come on. I'm going to keep my gun handy in case that rawhide should bust. It won't bust. Now, let's get the door open. Now, look out while I shove. It'll take more than your weight. Let me help. Now, together... And once more. That did it. Now inside. Holy 
big smoke. Look at the silver fox pelt. Piney, we've had a bonanza. We sure have. Look at that pile of furs in the corner there. Man, oh man, I never expected anything like this. Me neither. But let's load them on our sled and head for Dawson. Yeah, let's go. Sergeant Preston had left Elk Station long before daybreak and had made good time with his team of fine dogs. As he neared the cabin, the snow had stopped falling, and he could see tracks of another sled and the blurred footprints of two men. Then his eyes caught sight of the open door and the shaggy head of the great dog King protruding lifelessly from the broken window. King! Shouting to his team to halt, Sergeant Preston raced to the window. King! King, old fellow! As he raced toward the great dog, Sergeant Preston saw the rawhide trace drawn tightly and looped around the corner log. He reached for the knife in his belt. When he severed the thong, King dropped out of sight inside the cabin. Preston rushed through the open door. King! King! Sergeant Preston dropped to his knees beside King. With steady hands, he loosened the rawhide thong and the heavy collar with which it was entangled. A moment later, King stirred, then whimpered softly. You're alive, King. You're alive, boy. The heavy collar saved you, fella. The collar saved your life. In a few minutes, King recovered enough to get to his haunches. And as he did, Sergeant Preston massaged his neck and chest with strong fingers to get the blood pounding through the animal's veins. As he did so, he murmured words of encouragement. You'll be all right now. Preston looked around the room, which was bare of the furs he had seen the previous day. He quickly guessed what had happened. So the fur thieves were here, eh, fella? Easy, boy. Don't get excited. You're in no condition to start after them now. I need a little rest first. It'll give me time to get to Wayne Baxter. I'll find him somewhere along his trap line. I'll be a good boy and stay here and rest. As soon as I find Wayne, I'll be back, King. A short time later, Sergeant Preston was backtracking the almost obliterated trail of the fur thieves when he heard a call for help. Help! Help! It's Wayne. Wayne! Where are you? Uh, here, 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 here. I see him. Coming, Wayne! Sergeant Preston found Wayne Baxter lying in the trail, his body almost hidden by a heavy blanket of snow. Wayne, what happened? A bear trap. I sat in the trail. I'm caught in it. Bear trap? Two men said it. I think my leg's broken. I tried to open the trap, but I didn't have the strength. Now, don't move. I'll release you. Let me scoop the snow away. Uh, where's King? I'll explain later. Right now, I have to get this trap off your leg. Easy now. Embrace yourself. This is going to hurt. There. It's open. Thanks. Wayne. He's fainted. Wayne Baxter had endured the pain and cold. But with the arrival of help and his release from the steel jaws of the trap, he could no longer cling to consciousness. He fainted, falling back in the snow. Sergeant Preston examined the leg and found it unbroken but badly mangled. Carefully, he lifted the young trapper to his shoulders and headed toward the cabin. Half an hour later, Wayne recovered consciousness. Uh, uh, where am I? In your cabin, Wayne. Take it easy. My leg. I've treated it as well as I can, but I've got to get you to Dawson at once so you can see a doctor. Did they get my furs? Yes, Wayne, all of them. Uh, I guess my precautions were pretty useless. What do you mean? I was worried about... What you told me yesterday. After you left, I marked each of my pelts. But that didn't stop those thieves from taking them. It's a tough break, Wayne, but we'll get those men. Poor Ethel. She'll be disappointed. There's no time to worry about that now. I'll put you on the sled and we'll start for Dawson. Yeah. Easy now while I lift you. Yeah. The following morning, Ethel Baxter was serving breakfast to a portly man in his middle 40s. Well, uh, Mrs. Baxter, did your husband get to town yet? No, not yet, Mr. Wheeler. I expect him any time now. Well, I've had a couple of good offers from my tavern. Better offers than the deal I made with you. But I hold an option on the place. Yes, I know you do. But don't forget the option expires at midnight. If you and your husband haven't raised the money oh, for Oh, I'm then, sure we'll raise it. I hope you do raise the cash. I'd like you young people to get the place. You'll arrive well with it. Oh, here comes Sergeant Preston and King. Yeah. Looks as if they just come in from the trail, too. Covered with snow. Good morning, Sergeant Preston. Good morning, Ethel. Hello there, King. Did Wayne come with you? Yes, but I have some bad news for you. Bad news? What is it? We just left Wayne in Dr. Hunter's office. What's happened to him? He has an injured leg. Oh. He's 
caught in a bear trap set by fur thieves. They robbed him of all his furs. Steady, Ethel. Oh, oh, Wayne. Get your coat and I'll take you to him. He wants to see you. Yes, of course. I'll be ready in no time. Uh, just a moment, Mrs. Baxter. Yes, Mr. Wayne. Remember, your option to buy my place expires at midnight. I... I'm afraid we won't have the money. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Mr. Wheeler, we, we might have it later. If you could extend the option... I'm I... sorry, Mrs. Baxter, but I can't do that. If you don't close the deal to buy my place by midnight, your option will expire. I, I'll do what I can. To Sergeant Preston's surprise, Doc Hunter announced that Baxter's leg had been so well cared for that nothing further needed to be done. Did all that I could do, Sergeant. Good, I'm glad to hear that. All he needs now is rest. He can stay here in my place so I can look after him for a few days. It's a good thing you found me when you did, Sergeant. I'd have frozen to death in another hour. No doubt of it, Wayne. I wish I could get my hands on those two thieving polecats. I got a good look at both of them, but my leg caught in that trap, I couldn't do a thing. But why did they set a bear trap? I, I can't understand. They it. wanted to make it appear that Wayne had been caught in one of his own traps. That way, no one would suspect murder. Sure, that's what they planned. They thought I wouldn't be found long after I was dead. Uh, Ethel, dear, I, I guess this upsets all our dreams. You're alive, Wayne, and that's what counts. Now I've got to go back to the cafe. I might as well tell Mr. Wheeler we can't buy the tavern. Wait. I... Wait until midnight. Why, Sergeant? We might have good news for you. Wayne told me about the two men he saw heading for his cabin... I'm going to the Hudson's Bay Company. They may have sold the furs there. Oh, I see. I hope you can get them, Sergeant. I'll look for you at the cafe. What's wrong with King? Oh, I guess he's reminding me that he hasn't eaten in some time and he's hungry. Well. <laughs> King, you come along with me now. I'll see that you're well fed. He may not take food from you, Ethel, but you can try him. Go on, King. Go with Ethel. I'll see you later, boy. Let's sit down at this table, finally. I'm hungry enough to eat a whole side of venison. And so am I, but go easy till we get our money. We can come back and fill up after we collect on the furs. At what time does the bank open? In about an hour. You'd think the Hudson's Bay Company would keep enough cash on hand to pay for skins when they're delivered. Uh, $10,000 is a lot of cash, Red. They don't usually keep that much on hand. Oh, well, we'll have it soon. Then we'll get out of town in a hurry. I saw some of those reward posters again. And no one can prove anything against us. As far as anyone knows, we caught the furs ourselves. Finally, hey, look. Where? See that girl and the dog? Yeah. She's a waitress here. I've seen her before. I'm not interested in her. I'm looking at that dog. What about her? He looks like the one we tangled with yesterday. Yeah, yeah you're right. But it couldn't be the same dog. He... He's looking at his pony. I think we'd better get out. Look out, Ben. Look out. King. Get away, you. Get him off. King, stop it, King. So sudden and ferocious was King's attack that Red Dover and Piney Steel were bowl over. They went sprawling backward to the floor. In an instant, pandemonium spread through the crowded cafe. Back, King, back. Ethel Baxter, not knowing King's reasons for attacking the two men, grabbed the dog by his heavy collar and struggled to control him. King, stop it, I say, Stop. Easy, Under King. Ethel's pleading Easy, restraint, the great Easy, dog hesitated, and the two fur thieves crawled fearfully to their feet. Easy. Now hold out of that dog. Don't let go of him. I'm sorry. I can't understand why he did it. That dog should be shot. Hey, Piney, look. Mr. Barney. It's Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston. King attacked these two men without any reason at all. I could hardly believe what I saw. King had a good reason for attacking them. Why, what do you mean? These men stole Wayne's furs. King recognized them. That's a lie. You can't prove anything against us. I have plenty of proof. I've just come from the Hudson's Bay Company. That don't mean anything to us. The factor described you two is the ones who are waiting for the bank to open so he can get the $10,000 he agreed to pay you for furs. We trapped the furs ourselves. That's a lie. I examined the skins you sold. Every one of them is marked. Just as Wayne Baxter marked the skins he had in his cabin. What? Now, look here. You can't prove I it. saw those skins in his cabin. The marking on the back of the pelts was the proof I needed. The man you tried to kill is in town now. He saw both of you as you drove your dogs out of hiding and left him to die in the bear trap. He can identify you. Well, now, look here. There, there's been some mistake. We, uh... Well, we didn't want to say anything, but... 
We bought those skins from a fellow we met on the trail. Now, if you just let us go, we won't make trouble. My dog recognized you, too. I'll take King's collar, Ethel. All right, Sergeant. If you men think King made a mistake, I'll release him so he can study both of you at closer no, range. No, no, don't do that. Hold on to him. If you feel you've been unjustly accused... Well, I... Drop that gun. I keep that dog away. Don't let him near me. You moved too quickly in reaching for that gun. King saw you. Drop it. All right, Mounty, you win. I guess you have us dead to rights. Now we'll see that Wayne gets the money for those stolen pelts. Sergeant Preston took his prisoners to the doctor's office, and Wayne Baxter's identification of Red and Piney clinched the case, and the crooks were put in jail. A little later in the evening, Preston and Ethel Baxter were in Doc Hunter's office with Wayne and the doctor when someone rapped on the door. I'll get it. Uh, Howdy, Mr. Wheeler. Come in. Well, thanks, Doc. Hello, Mrs. Baxter. I wondered about your plans. Oh, Mr. Wheeler, everything is all right. We have the cash to take up the option. Thanks to King here. Yes, I saw him jump those two men. I should have known he had a reason for doing it. You certainly owe a lot to that dog. If it hadn't been for him, those two thieves might have gotten away. And we'd never be able to buy your restaurant. Isn't that right, Sergeant Preston? This isn't the first time King's brought crooks to justice, Ethel. Those two thieves didn't know it, but King never forgets an enemy. Or a friend. (laughs) Yes, King. Thanks to you, boy, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Listen, everybody, take a tip from Bugs Bunny himself. Look, Doc, you better hurry. Hurry is right. Time's running out. This is one of your very last chances to hear the sensational offer we have for you. Five, yes, five Bugs Bunny comic books. All yours if you act now for only 15 cents and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And these are handy pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books you've never seen or read before. All new. All different. And listen... In addition to the five Bugs Bunny comic books, we'll also send you information on how to get ten more. Wow, Doc, what an offer. So shake a leg, don't put it off a minute more. All you do is send 15 cents in coin, not stamps, that's all. Only 15 cents, your name and address, and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. The delicious, crisp, nourishing cereals shot from guns. Address your letter to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Did you get that? Send to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Dr. Blake's surrender. When my hand became infected as a result of frostbite, I called on Dr. Blake, who was an old friend. I was shocked to learn that Dr. Blake was charged with the murder of one of his patients. My investigation brought me face to face with the killer. I was handicapped because one hand was useless, and for a moment it seemed that I would be the second murder victim. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>